didn't record. All right, so today we are going to do um, VSEPR, which stands for valence, valence shell electron pair repulsion. Um, lone pairs around central atoms are what causes shape to molecules. So um, this is a, a chart that you really do need to memorize from beginning to end. It's um, Actually, if you do it visually in your head, there's not a lot of memorization necessary, and this is your second time being exposed to it, so you guys will be fine. Um, one thing I want to make sure we understand before we start this is the concept of areas of density. I'm referring to around a central atom. When you're determining the areas of density, you look at your Lewis dot structure, the things we drew on Friday, okay, or Thursday, I wasn't here Friday, and you count areas. What is an area? A double bond, I'm sorry, a lone pair is an area, okay, a single bond is an area, a double bond is one area, and a triple bond is one area. So any of those that are around the central atom is going to indicate an area. I just want to make that clear. So first I want to go through just generic shapes with you. You're going to build each one. We're going to talk about everything up through polarity today. And then tomorrow we do our hybridization, which is a separate topic, which is new this year for you guys. Okay. So um, first let's start with the family or what we call electronic structure. It's crucial you, don't, you guys don't get confused between the electronic and the molecular. Electronic refers to total number of areas, okay? And then molecular refers to the actual shape those areas have, the molecule has, based on whether those areas are a lone pair or bonded pair, okay? Bonded pairs and lone pairs will cause different shapes in space to happen. So the first family I want to talk about is linear. And... Um, it's going to be something with two areas. So I'm going to pop back and forth between some pictures. You guys have this built already, yes? Okay, so this particular molecule is linear. There are no lone pairs on the central atom, right? So this is two areas. How many of these areas are bonded areas? Two bonded. Okay, let's talk about bond angle. What do you think? From there, there in the structure in your hand, what do you think? 180 degrees. What's next in the chart? Molecular. molecular polarity. Okay, now, there's a difference between bond polarity and molecular polarity. Okay, and the AP is very picky on your description of that. Bond polarity is the polarity that exists between these two molecules and the formation of this bond, right? And in your hands, you've got, um, like, carbon dioxide that has two double bonds on it. Um, I did not mean to make a happy face there, but I just looked at that. That does look like a happy face. Um, anyway, so regardless of whether these both bonds are polar or nonpolar, that's not necessarily, if they're both the same, it's going to make the molecule what we call symmetrically, the electrons in the molecule symmetrically distributed. So we're not even going to worry about the polarity of the bonds, okay? What you're going to do is the following. You're going to look at that, and you're going to see that there are no lone pairs, right? If there are no lone pairs, and the outer attachment is the same, meaning these molecules are the same, say we have oxygen and oxygen, like CO2, okay? The distribution of the electrons is going to be even, right? So therefore, would this be a polar or nonpolar molecule? Nonpolar. Now, let me just preface you with the following. No lone pairs, there's an exception to that. And there's two of them. And we'll get to those. Okay? But when you have a linear molecule with the outer attachments the same, it's going to be nonpolar because there's no lone pairs on that central atom linear in the linear family. Now, um, what happens if these were different? Say this is fluorine. It's going to be polar because this bond being more polar is actually going to cre create an asymmetrical distribution of charge. So if you had to describe why something is polar or nonpolar, if something is polar, you need to say asymmetrical distribution 
of charge. You can't say the molecule is not symmetrical. AP will like <laughs> big X. You can't do that. Um, if something is nonpolar, what do you say? Symmetrical distribution of charge. You can think of this as um, vector addition. There's no overall net. Think about force of the pulling of the electronegative atoms. If there's no net force, it's going to be a symmetrical um, distribution of that, that charge. Okay? So going back to your table, <clears throat> electronic structure is linear. If both areas are bonded, the shape is linear. So here's the big hint for you. The name of the structure with all of its pairs bonded is going to be the same as the family. So the first, the top of every group is going to have the same electronic structure name as molecular structure name. Okay? Are you all good with this one? We said the bond angle was 180. And what do we say? Nonpolar. And again, look at the bottom of this chart. It tells you down here, the chart is filled based on the assumption that everything attached to the central atom is the same. The second you have multiple things attached to a central atom, even if you don't have any lone pairs, you make it polar. Okay? That's crucial. Okay, let's do our next family. It's a family of three. Um, it's called trigonal planar, and I want you to build it. Okay, so looking at the family of three, this would be something that's electronically three areas, right? Because I've got single bond, single bond, single bond, three areas, okay? So electronic, a single bond, a double bond is one area. I know. Single, single, single. In this picture, it's single, single, single. Um, so we have three areas, right? So three areas, how many of them are bonded in this particular picture? Three bonded areas, so no lone pairs. So electronically, this is called what? Trigonal planar. Do you see how it's a plane, that model? And I need to write trigonal. Electronically, this is trigonal planar. And then, since it is all bonded areas, what is its molecular name? Trigonal planar. Okay. Planar. Can't spell today. Okay. So, now let's talk about bond angles. we got a circle split into three. Each one is... 120. Okay. If everything on the outside is attached, do we have any lone pairs? No, and assuming everything on the outside attached is the same, this is polar or nonpolar? Nonpolar. Okay, and we'll go back for hybridization later. Questions on that? Now, we're still going to be in the three family area here, and Instead of having three areas bonded, what you're going to do to that very structure you have in your hand, you're going to just take off one of those single bonded molecules. Just take it off. Where that hole is is now where a lone pair is. So you've got two bonded areas, one lone pair. Okay? We said this was 120 and nonpolar. So tell me about that shape. What does that look like? What does that look like? You've heard it before. No, that doesn't look like a triangle to me. It's not, it's not straight, it's bent. This is bent. So electronically, what family is this? It's got three areas now. There's a lone pair up there. That lone pair is repelling those bonded electrons. So those bonded electrons then are pulled downward. So that makes this electronically still three areas, trigonal planar, but what is it molecularly? Bent. Now let's talk about this bond angle here. It was 120, right? 
But when those lone pairs, they take up a lot of space, lone pairs do, and they repel the bonded pairs, what happened to that 120 angle? It's less than 120. On your table, you can put about 117. You're not going to be held accountable for the exact number. On a multiple choice question, it'll make sense. They'll say, is it 117? Is it 109.5? Later you'll learn 109.5 is something else. Or is it, so they're not going to give you options that are so crazy that you can't just figure it out, knowing it's got to be less than what originally was is 120. Okay, you do have to know the 120 for sure, though. Now, so we have a lone pair up here. I want to talk about the polarity. We have a lone pair up there. That lone pair is causing repelling of those bonds. What's happening to the distribution of electron charge? Don't you think there's more electrons on this bottom part of the molecule now? Yeah? Because of the, where the bonds are located? So what would we call this? Polar. So I'm going to do a little visual demonstration and pause the video so you guys can see. So in, in filling this in now, we know that we have three areas, two that are bonded, but one is a lone pair, was called what? Bent. Good. What were the bond angles? Less than 120, approximately 117, but again, don't, don't freak out about that. And was this polar or nonpolar? Polar. polar. Good. Okay, now we're in the land of the four. So go ahead and build a molecule with your carbon that just has four single bonds on it, please. So now we're looking at four areas. The first picture we're going to see is it's called a tetrahedral. If all the four areas are bonded, its molecular structure is also tetrahedral. Let's look at one of my pictures here. I wish there was a faster way for me to get to it. Um, if you drop molecule kits every time you do, a puppy dies. Just saying. So... Every time you drop, you kill a puppy. Um, all right. Hold on. Shh. Let's focus. So we have four areas, right? I like to look at this. People think I'm crazy. But I look at it as a Martian with a head and three legs and no arms. See how it's, imagine, a Martian. Okay. So it's my Martian. The Martian has a set um, bond angle that's just weird, and it's one of the most common. And you all probably remember it. What was it? Good, 109.5. Now, so we know that this is tetrahedral electronically. And what is this um, geometry-wise? Since all of them are bonded, tetrahedral. We knew our bond angle was 109.5. Now let's talk about polarity. If we have all of these the same, that looks really like an even distribution of electronicness. So what is this going to be? Nonpolar, good. So now when we move on to still the tetrahedral family, we're going to chop the Martian's head off. And what's left? It's feet, right? Can you see it? I want you to try to see it in your head. Then you don't have to memorize it. Imagine the Martian's head coming off. And all that's left are its feet. And that's our next structure. This is still four areas, so electronically it's still, because now we have, and I'm going to draw it right here, a lone pair. Okay, tetrahedral, we have four areas, but this time only three of them are bonded. So this is called what, Garrett? No, it's trigonal, yes. It's not bi, it is, it's trigonal pyram pyramidal is actually the technical way to say it, but I don't go see the pyramids in Egypt, I go see the pyramids even though I've never, that's kind of one of my dream trips to go to Egypt. I think that would be cool. Because um, I want to walk like an Egyptian. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is called trigonal pyra pyramidal. Now bond angle, let's talk about it. Same thing. Imagine the lone pair up here on top, being on top. What is it doing to all of those bonded electrons? It's repelling them, doing what to the bond angle? It's making it less than 109.5, which is approximately 107 in this case. Again, whatever. The multiple choice will give you an actual number to choose, but it's going to be one that is less than 109.5. Whether they choose to put 107.3 or 4, it's so different in every textbook. It's crazy. So just know it's less than 109.5. Okay? We got last one. Now the Martian's going to lose a leg. And what's left? This is four areas with 
two lone pairs. This time, it's, a, it's the same, same one you've seen before, but it's just a different family. It's bent. It's tetrahedral electronically, but it is going to be bent this time. Different than the other bent. The other bent from trigonal planar, it's still bent, but that only had one lone pair and two bonded pairs. This bent has two bonded pairs and two lone pairs. So two bonded, two lone, still a total of four. Okay, and so the bond angle is going to be less than that 107. This time it's going to be less than less than 109. And I'm, you're not going to ever see that, so um, this one's approximately 104. So kind of know the range, you know, of what's going on there. And that's because now we've got increased repelling of those angles because of the two lone pair up there. Another happy face looking thing. Okay. <laughs> with the four eyes. Well, there, he's a Martian with no, now he's only got two legs. He's not real happy. A mustache? Yeah, I guess so. All right, I'm going to go back to the table and fill this in. So, tetrahedral family, what was the next one? Martian loses the head. It's trigonal, pyramidal, and then it loses a foot and it's bent. This one was 109.5. Oh, we didn't say the polarity on that. We'll go back. This one was, this is about 107. That's about 104. This one was polar. Now think back to the trigonal pyramidal one. What do you think? Oh, nonpolar. Sorry, guys. This is nonpolar. My bad. Think back to the trigonal pyramidal. Think about that little demonstration I did. Think about vectors. Polar or nonpolar? Polar. It's got that lone pair, right? And then the next one is? Polar. What's the real life example of that last one? Two areas and two areas. Mickey Mouse. Water. Exactly. So we didn't say this one. This one is going to be polar. Right? That trigonal pyramidal is polar because this kind of forces those bonds down. So the bottom side has way more electron area, areas of electrons, more electron orbitals on the bottom half if you're looking at this from the top down than the top making it a polar molecule regardless of the bonds. And then same thing here. Lots more electron cloud stuff going on here making my molecule polar as well. Okay. So now you're going to find, the colors are going to vary in your model kit. Some of them are brown, some of them are navy blue, some of them are UT, hook'em colors. Um, some of them are, are of a tannish kind of color, but you want the area, the, the thing with five areas, please. Go ahead and fill that up with bonds. So our next group is five areas. Electronically, that is called, I don't know if y'all remember this, it is called trigonal not pyramidal, there's two pyramids by, if you take pier, I'll show you where it gets that name when I turn to the page that has the um, picture on it. This is also going to be trigonal by pyramidal here, right? Because, I'm not, I shouldn't do that, that may, people might think it's bent if I do that. So this is going to be the same name because it's all five areas. And what that looks like, you guys have the model in front of you. I'm doing this for the home audience. The reason it's trigonal bipyramidal is because this is basically a pyramid with a tri oh this is the base with a triangular base. Okay, my picture is horrible. So you've got a pyramid up top with a triangular base and a pyramid underneath. They're bottom to bottom on the other side. So trigonal base pyramids, two of them, one on top of the other. Do you see it? That's trigonal bipyramidal. So five areas, all bonded, trigonal by pyramidal. Okay. Now this one has two different types of bond angles. Okay. If you pick up your molecule, I want you to notice how you have an axis and an equator. Please look at it. So notice how you have, you can only hold it one way for the axis to be up and down, okay? So the equatorial, if you just go around, what are those bond angles going around the circle? You've got three in that circle. 
So you've got equatorial equatorial bond angle being 120. But what about the bond angle from the axis to the equatorial? Good, 90. From the axis to the equatorial is 90. So you've got two separate bond angles there. Okay, and finally on this one, tell me about the um, polarity. Nonpolar for sure, because we've got all sorts of all sorts of vection. Is that what you said? Perfection. Okay. All right. So we got lots of areas all equally electronegative around that central atom. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the next. Now, be careful here. Everyone hold your molecule straight up and down. Straight up and down. I want you to see how you would have two different shapes if you took one off of the equator versus if you took the axial one off. Do you see that? Okay. We have to take the one off of the equator first. Why is that? It has to do with bond strength. Having the lone pair taken, when you take off the bond on the axis, do you see how all the bond angles are still 90? Go ahead and do that. Take off the bond off of the axis real quick. And you get this square pyramid looking thing, which is not square pyramidal. It's not, that, it's not a shape that we see. But do you see how all the bond angles are still 90 when you do that? There has been no bond relief there at all compared to what we were at before. But it's actually going to be less than 90 with that lone pair. But go ahead now and take one off the equator. Do you see what kind of bond we created there? We've created a 180. So removal off the equator allows for more bond relief. The bond strain is decreased. So that's why we have to remove off the equator. So again, we have a lone pair here. So this is five areas. Four bonded, one lone. Okay, put it on your desk. What does it look like? It's a seesaw. That's actually what people call it, guys. In some textbooks, you'll see irregular tetrahedron, but um, don't worry about it. I'm just telling you in case you run across it, you know where it comes from. But it is seesaw. Okay, what can you tell me about the bond angle? Less than 120 because of the repelling here that caused smaller. This repelling also repelled, this lone pair also repelled those bonds, bringing them closer together. And how about less than 90? Sounds good to me. Is this polar or nonpolar now? Polar. Has a lone pair, so it's going to be polar. Good? Is this better than last year? Because you're hearing it a second time? Yeah. That's the only reason it's better, because it's nice to hear things repeated. All right, and then the last one. Go ahead and take off another equator. So we have two lone pairs now. This is still five areas, so we're still in the family of what? We're still trigonal bipyramidal. This time we have three bonds and two lone pairs. Okay, trigonal bipyramidal. Hmm. What's it's actually going to be called though? What does it look like? T. It's Mr. T. A pity to fool. T shaped. T shaped. And you use the word shaped. You just don't say T. It's T shaped. All right, now if you notice, there are no longer any equatorial to equatorial bond angles. Look at your, at your thing. That's why I'm having you draw the, um, build these. There are no longer equatorial to equatorial. Those are all gone. So there's only that axial to equatorial bond angle. But now we got even more repelling. So what do you think it is? Way less than 90. Okay. Polar or nonpolar? Non. Oops, what am I doing? It's polar, super polar. Poor audience at home, I'm confusing. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go back to the table, make sure we have it all filled in. Back, 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 forever, forever. Whoa. 
too far. Okay, trigonal bipyramidal first is trigonal bipyramidal. What are my bond angles? This is a quick review. 120 and 90, is it polar or nonpolar? Nonpolar. The next trigonal bipyramidal is called seesaw. Bond angles? Less than 120. Good. Polar or nonpolar? Polar. And then T shaped. I shouldn't have gone back yet. I should have waited one more. This is just going to be less than less than 90, right? And this one's polar. The reason I, I want to get up to here and then move back to our last trigonal bipyramidal is because this one is an exception with polarity. And I want you to take a look at it. So we're going back. Oops, take off the top of your T. Really take off an equator again. We're looking for bond angle. If you don't take the equator off, you're left with some crazy little thing with a small bond angle, right? We want the most even distribution of the electrons as possible. So we have electrons, we have electrons, we have electrons, okay? This is going to be a case where there's going to be equal repelling of bonds. I can't show you this three-dimensionally like you can see on the actual model, but those lone pairs are kind of all evenly spread out around that central atom, right? So there's going to be equal repelling up and down of those bonds. So in terms of net force, is this going to be polar or nonpolar? So this is your one of two exceptions where if you have a lone pair on the central atom, it's actually going to be nonpolar. This was trigonal bipyramidal. What was its name? You already know this name. Linear. Linear. Good. Geometrically, it's linear. What did our bond angle do this time? Back to 180. Okay, you all get the whole idea about that equal distribution of charge. I need you to get that in your head. Don't say a molecule is symmetrical. You will get zero credit on the AP for saying a molecule is symmetrical. You have to talk about the distribution of charge. Okay, so going back to the table, we got one last group to do. Go ahead and start building your thing with six, six holes in it. Go ahead and fill that up while I fill in the table. Oh, this board is all of a sudden not working. Okay, nonpolar. I don't know why it's not responding. I can't even write. <sighs> really, I don't write that poorly. <laughs> Let me pause the recording. This is irritating me. All right, so final is our area. We have six areas. All six of them are bonded. The family is octahedral. The noun is octahedron. The shape is octahedral. Octa means what? Eight. Where's that coming from? So if you look at the molecule, I will get there someday. If you were to connect all the faces, there would be eight faces, right? That's where it comes from. Okay, so there are eight faces. This is your, your jack from when you were a kid. I don't know, y'all probably didn't play jacks like I did. Um, that's what they look like. Did you? Yeah, yeah, throw the ball down and you pick up one Z, two Z. How many jacks do you pick up? It's a good game. Um, so anyway, unlike the last one, there actually is no axes because you turn it one way it looks like it's an axis but if you turn it the other you still have an axis so there's no axis axial equatorial issues here we have to worry about we know that this is octahedral because we have six areas that are bonded what about our bond angles what are they all they're all 90 okay um, what about my polarity nonpolar or polar Nonpolar, not polar. Huh. It's a new term. Nonpolar. So, any questions on good old octahedral? It's octahedral electronically as well.
and then octahedral geometrically. All right, so now let's go ahead and, since there's no axis or equa equator, who cares? Just take off one of your bonds. And so we have a lone pair down there, okay? This is octahedral, but this time we have uh, five areas that are bonded. And one lone pair. So in that situation, what does that look like to you? A square pyramidal. See, it's a pyramid with a square base. Look at your model. So it's square, pyramidal. What about those bond angles? We've got this lone pair taking up space. What is it doing to those? It's repelling those bonds, so less than 90. Now just be aware your textbooks often are going to throw in 180s, and you're like, where's that coming from? A lot of these are going to have, especially in the nonpolar situation, if you've got something going through an axis, there's automatically a 180. You don't have to list that one, though. I only want to list the ones that I'm giving you here. Those are the most crucial, crucial atoms. All right, now. We're going to take off one more bond. Which bond do you think we take off? The opposite, because lone pairs take up so much space, they want to be as far apart as they can. They want to be as far away from each other as possible. So we're going to remove the opposite bond. So you have a lone pair on top, a lone pair on bottom. So this is octahedral, right? But this octahedral has um, four bonds. So what is this called? It's square, but how does it look? Do you see how it's a plane? Square planar. Square planar. Okay, this is our other exception to our bond to our polarity. Well, let's do bond angle first so I don't jump out of order. Now we have repelling above and below equal. So what happens to the bond angles? It pushed everything back. So they're back to 90. In terms of the polarity, I know we have lone pairs, but again, we've got around that central atom, it's equally symmetrical, right? I've got top lone pair, bottom lone pair, four um, things attached to it all, nice and evenly distributed. So what would this be? Nonpolar. Okay, back to the chart for the final time. Finish her up. Get her done. And then we're going to do some drawings. Yes, drawings. Have you all ever watched Simon? Well, I know my name is Simon. And the things I draw come true. A little kid who took baths. <laughs> it's one of those little kid shows. Anyway, I'm not going to go there. So octahedral. It's first octahedral. Let's review it. What's our bond angles? 90, polar or nonpolar? Nonpolar. Then we have, take off the top and we get square, pyramidal, and bond angles, less than 90, polar or nonpolar? Polar. Let me move this guy. And then our last one is square, planar, bond angles, 90, and then nonpolar. So those are two exceptions where you have lone pairs but they're nonpolar, okay? The only exceptions. You are killing puppies like crazy today, sir. Oh. All right. So go to the examples after the chart, please. Okay, so we're going to draw these, and then we're going to answer the questions about them. Um, so SO3, needed available shared. This is a review. 8 times 3 is 24. How many do we actually have? 6 times 3 is 18 plus 6 is? Oh, 8 times 4 is 32. Oh, chihuahua, I'm already making mistakes. 8 times 4 is 32. <laughs> Can someone grab that for me? 32. Um, actually, we have 6 times 4 is 24. So how many are we going to share? Share 8. So how many bonds is that? Four bonds in this picture. How do you want to place them? We don't need to do resonance in this particular exercise to figure out shape and all this. So we're going to ignore that. One, two, three, four bonds. 
Um, we still have 16 to pass around, is that correct? So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So now let's answer these questions. Determine the molecular geometry. Here we have a picture with how many areas around the central atom? Three areas. So what is the, I, I want electronic too. What is this electronically? Trigonal planar. I'm doing little shortcuts. And then what is this molecularly? Trigonal planar. And um, bond angles? 120, polar or nonpolar? Nonpolar. That's how you apply the chart. Okay? You can't just look at SO3 and assume it's going to have three things attached and be planar without drawing your Lewis dot structure. Because something like lone pairs might all of a sudden be on the central atom, changing that. So you can't be lazy. You have to draw out your Lewis dot structure to determine this information. So let's go ahead and do um, SO3 minus 2. We know SO3 needed available share. The needed is going to be the same, 32. How many do we have this time, though? 26. So we're going to share how many? Six electrons. So 2, 4, 6. And then how many do we have left to pass around? 20. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. What do I do with the other pair? Central atom, 20. Okay, so this changes things. Even though there's just three things attached, this is why we have to see this picture. Because of this charge here, we have those two extra electrons um, on the central atom. So how many areas do we have around the central atom? Four. So this is electronically tetrahedral, right? What is it geometrically? Martian loses his head. Trigonal pyramidal. Okay. Bond angles. Not 109.5 because there's a lone pair now, but it's about 109, less than 109.5, about 107. Okay. Polar or nonpolar? Polar. So do you see how two that look on the onset like they'd be pretty much the same, have different shapes, different polarities, and all sorts of things? You have to draw your Lewis structures. Okay, I don't have room here to do NO2. I will do um, I3 minus at least just to give you guys an idea of how to approach this. So needed available shared. 8 times 3 is 24, but each has 7 times 3 is 21 plus 1 is sharing 2. Sharing two, one bond. Uh oh. It's an uh oh, right? What was an uh oh? It's an exception with an expanded valence. So we're just going to look at the 22 and place them. We're going to place, what's the first job for exceptions? Review from Thursday. Single bonds first, good. Two, four. Now we're going to fill out the periphery. Six, eight, ten, twelve. 14, 16. Where are we going to put the rest? On the center. 18, 20, 22. There it is. Again, this whole thing is negative 1. Unless I do formal charge, I need brackets. If I do formal charge on each atom, I don't need brackets. All right. So how many areas is, is this? Five. So what family is this? Good. Trigonal, bipyramidal. What's the ge geometric shape? Think about it. Let's start. Five is trigonal bi pyramidal, bipyramidal. You lose one, it's seesaw. You lose another, it's T-shaped. You lose another, linear. So this is linear. Is it polar or nonpolar? No, it's one of the nonpolar exceptions because all those lone pairs are evenly distributed around that central atom. And then what was the bond angle for linear? 180. I know I drew it bent, but again, Two-dimensional drawings are meaningless. You have to draw it and know the Vesper table. Are you all good with understanding how to apply today to the drawings we did on the other, the other day? So a good exercise for you would be to go back to some of the other drawings we did and um, figure out what those shapes are and, and apply the chart if you need more practice.